Hello again, I'm Matthew Gore from lightandmatter.org. The new generation of 24-70mm f2.8 lenses is surprisingly good. If you're looking for one, today I'm comparing the Canon 24-70 Mark II and the new Tamron 24-70 with image stabilization. Beyond the image stabilization though, there's another major difference, about $750. Both are well constructed and feel like professional quality lenses. The Tamron is a little bulkier, and the focusing ring is closer to the body than the zoom ring, which takes some getting used to, but it's not a problem otherwise. They also both use a silent motor, and I'll start my comparison there. For reference, here's a lens that just about everyone is familiar with, the Canon 50mm f1.8 with a standard micro motor. This is what it sounds like and again, and one last time. Now here's the Canon USM motor, and again, and now the Tamron USD motor, and a final time. Both lenses are very quiet and although they sound a little different from each other, I can't say that either one is quieter than the other. An examination of the waveforms shows that the Canon may be measurably louder, but the difference is insignificant. In the real world, they're both silent in all but the most quiet environments. But of course, what we really care about is the image quality. So, when these lenses arrived in the mail, I packed up my equipment to head out into the mountains to take some test shots. But something weird happened. We had a sunny winter day in Seattle. The skyline was clear and the Space Needle, I could even see Mount Rainier in the background. So I decided to start by using the Cityscape for some test shots at the 70mm end of the lenses. But first, for those of you who care about methodology, let me give you some details. I shot all the images with a Canon 5D Mark III mounted on a sturdy carbon fiber tripod with the center column down. I shot with the mirror up and used either a timer or a cable release with the VC off on the Tamron lens. The images were shot as RAW files, opened as 16-bit for comparison, and I made no adjustments in Camera Raw or Photoshop like sharpening or noise reduction. But since most of that doesn't make any difference when you're looking at this stuff in a compressed video here on the internet, you can download the original files in the corresponding article at Light and Matter. Here's the link in the description below. With the lenses wide open at f2.8, let's start by taking a look at something near the center of the image, here, where you can see the arches of the Seattle Center and a crane. Even wide open, both lenses are very sharp here in the center. The Canon might be just a little bit sharper, but the difference is only visible at 100% magnification. We wouldn't see it in a print. Moving a little further away from the center, the difference is a little more pronounced, on the elevator rails, for example. But again, they're still both very sharp. If we move out to the extreme border, we start to see the first significant difference. Here, the Tamron is noticeably fuzzier. The white window frames here are still quite sharp in the Canon, but look a bit soft on the Tamron. Not horrible, but noticeable. But what if we stop down a bit to f5.6? Near the center, they're still both very sharp, not much difference, if any. Closer to the edge, they're both still sharp, and down in the foreground, they're both equally sharp. But out at the extreme border, the Tamron still lags behind just a little bit, and the Canon is more contrasty. At f8, the Canon remains sharper maybe, but the Tamron looks pretty good. The next day I decided to drive up the Mountain Loop Highway to do some additional testing. The light wasn't great, but I wasn't trying to take good pictures, just good test pictures. I started on a riverbed, wide open again at 24 millimeters. I focused on this orange rock in the center of the frame. Both lenses seemed a little sharper overall at 24 millimeters. And in the center, there's very little difference between them. And even closer to the edge of the frame, I still don't see any clear difference. They're both still nice and sharp here. 
Now at the extreme edge, I noticed something a little odd. At the focal plane, they look about the same, even here at the edge, but if you compare the area just behind it and the rocks closer to the camera, the cannon is sharper in the foreground and softer in the back. This indicates to me that there may be a minor issue with field curvature in the Canon lens at f2.8. At 5.6, both look about the same in the center, and the difference at the border is almost gone, probably beyond what would be visible in a print. At f8, we might be able to say the Canon is a little bit sharper at the extreme border, but the images are otherwise virtually identical across the frame. So let's take another look at the 70mm end, at f2.8. Like the first time, we see that the difference is least visible in the center of the frame. Towards the edge, we see that this time the cannon is significantly sharper, and at the extreme border, the Tamron is pretty soft, but still usable. I actually think it's possible that on this image I may have bumped the Tamron a little bit. It shouldn't be quite this different. Stopping down to f5.6, we see that the center is very close again. And at the edge of the frame, the cannon is still maybe a little bit sharper, but the difference is minimal. At the far border, the difference is still more pronounced. Stopping down further to f11, the images are almost indistinguishable. There's a little more contrast on the Canon side maybe, but this is only a difference that we'd see zoomed in like this, not at display size or in a print. You might notice that the bare branches aren't super sharp in either case, and that's because the images have not been corrected for chromatic aberration yet. If you're not familiar with chromatic aberration, I'll explain briefly. When light is being focused by a lens, the glass elements refract the light coming through it, but the different colors of light don't all behave in the same way. So sometimes different colors are split out, for the same reason that a prism will split white light into a full rainbow. In photographic lenses, this usually appears as either a purple magenta fringe or a green fringe, or both, around high contrast edges in an image. So, Let's take a look at a couple of images in Adobe Camera Raw. I'm using the latest beta version, which is 7.4, as you can see here. I'm going to select both of these images, one from the Tamron, one from the Canon, and zoom into the 200% level so that the detail might be visible in this video. Normally, I wouldn't zoom in this far, and I'll move up so that we're looking at the branches against the sky. If you look closely, you should be able to see that there's a purple fringe along the tops of these branches, and green along the bottom. And if I switch to the second image, you'll see the same thing. Usually this is the sort of thing that you'd correct during post-processing. If it's not too bad, it can usually be corrected completely, so let's see how it goes on these lenses. Under the Lens Corrections tab, I'm going to click the Enable Lens Profile Corrections checkbox. This is supposed to automatically detect the lens that was used, but for some reason it doesn't work with the Tamron. It thinks it's a Sigma lens. So I'll do this manually. I'll select Tamron and just double check that it has selected the right lens, and it has. Then under the Color tab, I'll click on Remove Chromatic Aberration. Looking again at those branches, you'll see that most of that purple and green fringe is gone. In fact, if we were just looking at 100%, I think this would be fine, but since we're zoomed way in like this, I can still see a little bit of purple. So I'm going to bump the purple amount up to two, and now that color fringe is completely gone. Now let's look at the Canon. We'll do the same thing, start by enabling lens profile correction, and then under the color tab, checking the remove chromatic aberration checkbox. Again, there's a big improvement, but there's still a fair amount of purple left behind, so I'll slide that purple amount up to two, and it's just fine. Both lenses do suffer from moderately strong chromatic aberration, 
but at least on the 5D, it's correctable. It's important to remember, though, that even when corrected, chromatic aberration reduces resolution, so it's always best to start out with a lens that has less. In this case, I think the lenses are about the same. So I've talked about optical quality, but there's another major difference between these two lenses, and that's the Tamron's image stabilization system. Tamron has it, and Canon doesn't, so I didn't think that it was necessary to do comparison shots here. Image stabilization performance depends on the shooter, and we all know that it works at least to some degree. Instead, I decided to just go out and shoot some landscape photos, handheld, with the Tamron lens in moderately low light. These were some of the shots that I took. I found that at 24mm, I was satisfied with the sharpness of the shots handheld at about an eighth of a second, pretty frequently, but rarely at a quarter of a second, although shooting bursts helped in both cases. Those of you who are less caffeinated at that time of the morning might do better. At the 70mm end, I'd normally handhold about an 80th of a second here, and I found that a tenth of a second was pretty reliable, but again, a fifth or a quarter was not. This is a significant amount of wiggle room that I just wouldn't have with the Canon. And although I wouldn't normally use it for shooting landscapes, I would definitely use it when shooting events. So let me wrap this up with a quick summary. Both lenses have an excellent build quality and both focus quickly and quietly although the placement of the focus ring is unusual on the Tamron. When it comes to image quality, both lenses perform extremely well in the center of the image, but towards the edges of the frame, the Canon performs significantly better at large apertures. At 24 millimeters, both are quite good, even at 2.8, and by f5.6, the difference is not significant. At 70 millimeters, the Tamron borders are pretty soft at 2.8, good at 5.6, and about equal to the Canon by f11. For me, the Tamron provided around three stops of image stabilization. I think it's worth remembering that sharpness is almost never what makes a photograph great. When's the last time you were in a gallery and heard someone say, I love this picture? Really? Why? Well, it's so sharp, even in the corners. No, a great image comes from great composition, catching a great moment, or from a great idea. That said, I'm still a sucker for sharp lenses. If someone offered me a choice of either one of these lenses, I'd probably take the Canon. When it comes to spending my own money on a lens, though, I'd probably go with the Tamron. For the kind of work that I do, the image stabilization would give me more good images than Canon's extra sharpness would. On a final note, if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. I hope that some of you found this comparison useful. If you'd like to see any changes made for future comparisons, just let me know, but be nice.